How many of you guys are excited to be in the house of God tonight? So I'm very excited. Um, Eric crumpled my paper. Thank you very much. Um, anyways, how many of you guys are excited to be in the house of God tonight? Amen. I'm very excited, and I'm, I'm excited not just about tonight, but I'm excited about the vision of our youth, just seeing how, you no, know, we have Pablo here. He went from, you no, know, that bad lifestyle, smoking, uh, being with bad friends, to all of a sudden playing from that shy person. I remember he hid behind his sister all the time, and from going from there to playing in front of 3,000 people, in front of crowds, and play, doing backflips in front of people, preaching in front of youth, leading people to Christ. That is our vision. That is what we live for. Amen? Amen. And honestly, we came such a far way. I have a picture, so is there a way we can turn that on? We've came such a far way from uh, where, we, where we used to be with our church, our youth. Um, no picture? All right. Anyways, this very funny picture of uh, Pastor Martin from his uh, back back in the days he's uh, he's putting uh, he's putting he has a very gucci very big uh a jacket he has a very uh f he looks like a fob fresh off the boat kind of person he's putting up piece of paper evangelizing onto a car and uh it's back in those days knowing um our pastors back in the days you didn't know if they're stealing the windshield wiper or evangelizing or something so we've come a long way here from the lights from the the church remodeling anything and this is all for the vision now it's like a funnel the funnel the the top of the funnel is big it's for a coffee shop for the gym for all that but the bottom of the funnel is very uh, narrow and it's very for little things go through because at the bottom is all about, it's very narrow because it's all about the vision. Everything that we do revolves around the vision and goes through the vision. That is why we're here. That is why we're here as a believers. Amen? Amen. So the title of my message is going to be, As a Man Thinketh. Yeah, I know, very Shakespeare. I told my sister, I'm like, hey, let me just do as a man thinks. She's like, no, that's going to sound smarter if you do it that way. So basically... I believe, I believe every single person here, you are what you think. So basically, so basically my title in a non-Shakespeare-ish way. You are what you think. You are the person, you, you are now or you will become the person that you think in your, uh, in the thoughts that you think. See, you know a lot of people, how many of you guys seen people that are very negative and very, you're just like, man, I don't like being around you. And the thing is, how many of you guys, yeah, there you go. And um, this is not time to look at your neighbor like, yeah, that's you. Um, but, and then you sit down with them and you, and you listen to how they talk. You listen to how they think. And they're just very negative people the way they think. And the thing is, what you think will reflect your life will reflect on your life and I just want to go from a, a short verse it's Proverbs 23 7 it says where my mind goes man follows that's my design um so where my mind goes man follows Proverbs 23 7 and I'm gonna be speaking kind of from the story of Job and many of you guys know the story of Job he he had everything you could want he had the sheep the cattle the 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 wife the the kids he had everything and then in a split moment everything gets taken away from him but what I love about Job the story of Job is he always remained positive even when everything was taken away from him and so that is my first point, is be positive. Job never let, Job never let the, 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 the level of his life, never let the level of his thinking reach the level of his life. And so you guys got to realize that your life will always follow your thinking. We, we think about 30,000 thoughts a day, and a lot of them are repetitive. So what you, and it's not just biblical, but it's scientific. That when you think positive, your life will be positive. And we see it all around us. When people are always negative, you don't like to be around them because they're negative people. When people are positive, they think positive. Even in the midst of a situation, they're still positive. Those are the people because when in their mind, they're positive. And what happens is, and just like in the story of Job, everything was taken away from him. And even his wife said, 
curse God and die. And he said, "What well, you're only supposed to worship God in, in your good times. I'm paraphrasing you. You're only supposed to worship God in your good times and not in your bad. It's the thing is I love about Job is in the midst of everything being taken away from him. He never let the, the level of his mind reach the level of his circumstances. And you guys got to realize that uh, when the, danger, the most dangerous, the biggest loss, see, even in Job's life, the biggest loss was his life was all the way down here. That is, that's a big loss and it sucks. Everything was taking him. But the biggest loss is when, not when your life down here, but when the level of your thinking reaches the level of your circumstances. Because when you think on God's word, when you dwell on God's word, there after that, the level of your life, the level of your circumstances will reach the level of your thinking. And there's a story that Pastor Vlad would always share of this bar, uh, barracuda fish. Um, a long time ago, he, they put two fish into a fish tank, a big fish tank. One regular fish and one barracuda fish. And obviously the barracuda fish wanted to eat the little fish. But what they did is this was a scientific project. They put a piece of glass in between uh, the barracuda fish and the regular fish. And so and then they let them loose. And right away the barracuda fish uh, swam, I was about to say ran, uh, swam to, to the other side of the glass to eat the fish. But what happened is, boom, he hit, the, he hit the glass. And he was like, no, what the heck? What was that? And so he goes back, and then again he tries. And then again he tries, and again he tries. And then he got it into his mind that there, I cannot reach that because of the countless times that I keep on running into the glass. And so what they did after that is the barric what they, they, they removed the glass. But the, the interesting thing was the barracuda fish never again went across to the other side. Because the glass wasn't there, but the repeated failures, the repeated things in the life began to make them think that I can no longer do that. I can no longer get over there. And see, the thing is a lot of times in your life, your life, uh, um, every Christian could attest, just because you're a Christian, life is not going to be a bed of roses. I can attest, everybody can attest that life as a Christian is not a bed of roses. But what happens is you have God on your side. So now you're not doing this alone. You have God on your side. So the thing is, uh, devil will try to, the moment life life happens just plain life happens devil will try De devil is like that stalker stalker go a girlfriend or boyfriend you're dating someone and they like you and the moment you post that or you delete all your photos that's and the person that likes you you know slides into the dms yeah, you guys do um, devil, <laughs> devil is, is exactly like that. Once devil realizes that your life hit a breaking point or a, a breakup point, devil will try to slide into DMs and try to feed you bad thoughts. He will try to feed you bad things. But the thing is, he can only try to feed you bad thoughts. He can only try to feed you bad thoughts. And some of you guys might think, oh, I can't think, I can't control my thoughts. Uh, the Bible says, think on these things. So it's either you're right, you're wrong, or the Bible is wrong. You're wrong or the Bible is wrong because the Bible says think on these things. So the Bible is telling us that we have the ability to think our thoughts. And yes, there will be times where uh, bad thoughts come in, uh, thoughts you don't want to think, images, those things. But you have the control. And when your life goes down, what do you got to be like? You got to be like Job. You got to stand your ground and be like the three Hebrew, bro uh, Hebrew boys that stood in front of the fire and said, whether God frees us or delivers us or not, he is my deliverer. And you got to keep the level of your thinking up there even though the level of your life is down here the biggest loss the biggest loss now when your life is down here is when the level of your thinking you let that you let the level of your life and the circumstance affect and influence the level of your thinking amen and so some practical steps just to be positive to keep a positive mindset, even in the midst of a situation, in the, even in the midst of things going wrong, is read your Bible. The Bible is the truth. This, the Bible will set you free from every single lie, every single thing. So read the Bible, uh, pray, um, spend time in prayer, listen to podcasts, listen to a lot of sermons. That's what I love to do. Even if you don't have time to uh, read the Bible, which 
um, which I'm sure we all have time. But even if you don't like reading the Bible, you can listen to the Bible. And something I started doing is because during work, you could start to listen to the Bible so you can multitask. And you get through a lot done, and it's just amazing. And so listen to sermon, listen to podcasts, um, encouraging words, and also surround yourself with positive people. And I, 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 the way I, I love this because that's how I was, I was fortunate to grow up. Uh, with people that were very positive and not saying they were wealthy, they were rich, they were doing good in life, but they were positive. In every single situation that they that they went through, there were positive people. They always had a positive attitude. When you say, man, I, I can't do this, they say, don't think like that. They say, you can do this. And I, I love our churches because we're a church that thinks positive. We don't think that we're, we're uh, fighting from defeat. We're a church that says we're fighting defeat from a standpoint of victory. We're not fighting defeat from a standpoint of defeat. And that's why I love, surround yourself by mentors, by pastors, those friends that will encourage you, not just have sympathy for you, because you, you can have those friends that are, oh man, that sucks, but you have those friends that say, no, chin up, let's do this, you're going to get through it, and they'll push you through, amen? <clears throat> and my second point is thinking creates your destiny. Thinking creates your destiny. So one question I have for you today is how does your destiny look? How does your thoughts, the thoughts that you think, what kind of destiny are you building? See, a lot of people think, a lot of people think is, uh, I want my life to get better and then I'll be happy. I want this and then I'll be happy. I'll have joy. I'll have that. But that's not how it works. And the thing is, what you have to do is your, your life will catch up to the level of your thinking. Your life will catch up. And the thing is, the Bible, the Bible uh, uh, demonstrates us from the very, very beginning of the Bible. Genesis 1, it says, on the first day, God created the light. So he created the light. And see, every human thinks, if there's light, there has to be sun, moon, and stars. You get that. But on day four, God says, I created the sun, the moon, and the stars. So you get a little confused. You're like, Wait, so... So first I have to have happiness and then I get a boyfriend. And so, but a lot of us like to tell God, first I want, I want a boyfriend that will make me happy. And God's saying, no, no, no. You have to have day one first, then you get day four. First you get the light, then you get the boyfriend, then you get the girlfriend, then you get the money, the job, the family. You get all of that. And many of you guys might say, well, how do I get the light if I don't have the sun, the sun, the sun, the moon, and the stars. How do I get the happiness if I don't have the money, the girl, the boy, the curves, the looks, the six pack? Um, how do I get that? And it's simple. He says he spoke. He said, let there be light. See, we, the Bible says we have the, the power of life and death at the tip of our tongue. So how do you get happiness? You speak it. You think it. The thoughts that you think. You get day one, then you get day four. See, God wants you to think good thoughts. God says in the word, I think good thoughts towards you. I know that plans for you. They're for good. They're not for evil. They're to prosper. you give you health, wealth. And so God wants you to think positive about your life. But I believe there's people in this room that you're like that barracuda fish. You hit so many failures in life that your thinking has gone to the level of your life. You no longer, you, you're thinking, now you think you're a failure. Now you think you're, you're ugly. Now you think uh, you so many failures that you'll never make it in life. You, you never graduate. You never do good in education. You never have the good looks. And for a lot of teenagers, youth, because they go through uh, high school, you, a, lot of, a lot of teenagers get their heart broken. And maybe you get that lie. Maybe you start thinking in your mind because of my boyfriend, because my girlfriend broke up to me. And now you start thinking, I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good looking. I'm not going to be able to have a good husband. I'm not going to be able to have a good wife, a family, a good education. And you begin to think bad thoughts. 
is because Satan, Satan, knows, Satan knows your future. Satan knows that you have a bright future. Every single one of you because we are created in the, uh, in the likeness of God. And so when we are created in the likeness of God, we walk in authority. We trample for snakes and scorpions. And Satan, the thing is, Satan knows that. And like I said earlier, Satan's going to try to come in. He's going to try to offer you once you mess up. Once your life comes down, he's going to try to make the level of your thinking come down to the level of your life. And the thing is, if we keep a positive mindset, if we keep our word, our life, uh, uh, keep the word of God a standard for our life, sooner or later, like I said, our life will come to our thinking. Sooner or later, our situation will come up and follow up to our proclamation, to what we believe, to what we stand for. And that is the promises that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. That we are royal priesthood. That we are made in the likeness of God. And we are the sons and daughters of the Most High King. And that's what every single person here has to stand on. And you have to have a positive thinking. You can't think, you can't think what Satan wants you to think. He's going to feed you those things. But you have to say, no Satan, I know God has good thoughts for me. And I will have good thoughts about my future. And the thing what Holy Spirit does, Holy Spirit works through uh, pictures and images, what you think in your mind, what you say to yourself. So when you look, that's why a lot of people, when they wake up in the morning, they don't feel like they're beautiful. They go in front of the mirror and they say, you're beautiful. You're loyal. You're important. <laughs> because what we think will reflect our life. Our situation has to come up and follow our proclamation that is we are sons and daughters of the most high God that is the promises God has for our life and they are for good and not for evil thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come